We know you could have gone anywhere. You could have stayed home. You know, it's a little dreary. It's a little cold. But you just pressed your way and you came into the house of the Lord to assemble with other believers. I'm going to read um, the 95th Division of Song, which is, we're calling, an, which is an invitation to worship God. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds in his hands the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountain. The sea belongs to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people who he watches over, the flock under his care. If only you would listen to his voice today. And I've read to, uh, to, uh, to you verses 1 to 7. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, the readers, and the doers of his holy word, um, the service. And, and I just pray that you're blessed by this. Our purpose is to worship God. He has done so much for us. So we should, we should always give him gratitude, not just in the house of the Lord, but at home, in our cars, on our jobs. We should give him praise, praise and thanksgiving each and every day. Amen. Because it's because of him that we live and have our being, move and have our being. Thank you. In the hands of the um, choir. Thank you. Thank you. And good morning to you. Good morning to you. What a pleasure. What a pleasure it is to see you on this morning. As the sister said, it could have been anywhere. Uh, but God so God saw fit that he would allow us to see another day and that you will have an opportunity to come and sit in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I know we, you know, we uh, had this past week and we've gone through things and different things that happened in our lives. Well, God is still worthy to be praised. He is our, come on, he is our way maker. He is the way. He's our way maker. And, and you know, our Sunday isn't reserved just for praise and worship. It ain't reserved. Right. God, you know, every day is a day of thanksgiving. Yeah. Praise yeah. Sing that song. Yeah. Every day is a day of thanksgiving. And we're to give God our all. I want to honor God with my life. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And that means everything that I do. I want to honor him with everything that I do. And I'm going I'm to tell you a secret. Even about you. You wasn't created to hold back. God didn't create you to hold back. He did not create you to hold back. He created you to give him your all. You know, God gave his all? His only begotten son. And Jesus, this is one of the things that blows my mind. Before Jesus endured all that he endured, Scripture says that he was beaten beyond recognition could not be recognized but even before before he endured all that he endured could you imagine you know that god that you know the trinity part of the trinity they created heaven and the earth you know all those things agreed decided to come down for our redemption to die for us thank you and and all the things he endured and you know Hey, we have our positions and all that stuff, and, you know, we, we can be, you know, we can, you know, hey, I'm, I was this, I'm that. But Jesus said, no, I love them. They can't do it. I'm going to do it for them. And, and for God to say that, you know, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They offered him vinegar, you know, they did all these horrible things to him, and he never said a mumbling word. Thank you, Lord. But, like I said, this is the thing that blows my mind. Even before enduring all that, he knew he was going to endure. That's right. He knew it already. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? Thank you, Lord. Who 
who wouldn't serve a God like that? A girl, yeah. a God that not only created the heavens and earth and all those things, but knew that I'm still a wretch undone and was willing to die for me. Hmm. So you'll find this morning's scripture reading in, <clears throat> in the book of Ephesians, starting with verse 10, and it reads, it reads as follows. I'm sorry, chapter 6, beginning at verse 10. And you're going to need this. You're going to need this when you go out there as you're about yeah. your daily life. You're going to need this. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to why, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Amen. That's why. Amen. Think about that as you go about your week, as you go about your day, how important that armor is. If you notice, if you, you read in the rest of uh, Ephesians there, all the armor was for the front, not for the back. Right. For the front. And the armor is necessary. It is necessary. Amen. 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 We praise God. We praise God for that. Now Kevin's going to give us a song as we move forward in our, in our devotion. I pray you just, just release that you would just think about anything that would hinder you from being as close, getting as close to God as you can on this day, in this hour, right now, that you remove it. You know, we, you know, the scripture tells us to come into the court with praise and thanksgiving. So, remove anything. Yeah. Anything. Come on, Kevin. He is jealous for me. Love like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory and I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me and oh how he loves us all oh how he loves us how he loves us all. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves He is jealous for me. Love you like a hurricane. I come to you this morning to say thank you. Thank you for another glorious and wonderful day, oh Heavenly Father. Thank you. 
Father God, we just want to thank you for waking us up this morning, oh, Heavenly yeah. Father God. We ask that you would just continue to endow us with your Holy Spirit throughout this service, oh, Heavenly Father. We just ask that you just come in and lead and guide us throughout this service. Let your spirit flow this morning, oh, Heavenly Father. Father God, we just thank you and we glorify and we magnify your holy name. But today is all about you, all about us magnifying you, lifting you up. Giving you the praise, giving you the glory, giving you the honor, O oh, Heavenly Father. Father God, for it is only through and in through you, O oh, Heavenly Father, that we are here. Yes. God, and we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you Lord. Lord. We just magnify and we just give you the highest praise. And we just say hallelujah to your holy name, O oh, Heavenly Father. Father God, and we just ask that you continue to watch over those that are not here, those that are on their way. We ask that you continue to watch over those that are sick. Those that are in the hospital, those that are at home on the sick bed. And we just ask that you just continue to comfort those who, who, who have lost loved ones, oh Heavenly Father. Comfort them in their time of, in their time of bereavement. Father God, give them strength. Give them courage to keep moving forward, oh Heavenly Father. Father God, we just ask that you just continue to pour your blessing upon our pastor and his family. Father God, we just ask that you just continue to use us for your service. Use us for you. Allow us to use. We had in our Sunday school study about the gifts. Father God, we just ask for your understanding, your knowledge, yeah. your wisdom, yeah. to where we can use the gift that you have given each and every one of us, that if we may use it to glorify your kingdom, to build your kingdom, oh Heavenly Father. And Father God, we and all and all said and done, we just want to continue to to you to, for you to get the glory, yes. Father God, and all that we do for you. Oh, Heavenly Father, and we just ask that you just prepare our hearts and mind, body, and soul for this up and coming week, oh, Heavenly Father. For we know the enemy is out there, but we know the enemy is going to come up against us. But, yes. Heavenly Father, but the battle is not ours, it's yours, Lord. Yes, Lord. And so, Father God, we stand for and we fight from a place of victory, oh, Heavenly yes. Father, for the victory is ours, Lord. And for the only thing we have to do is keep our mind stayed on you, oh, Heavenly Father God. And we just ask that you just continue to be with us throughout this week. Comfort us, cover us, oh Heavenly Father. And we just ask that you, you just continue to be with us. And Father God, we just watch over us throughout this week. Watch over our children, Lord. Yes. Father God, as they go to and from school this week, oh Heavenly Father, cover them, oh Heavenly Father, in the schoolhouse, oh Heavenly Father. And we just ask that you would just be with them, Father God. And Father God, we just ask these blessings and all others in your Son, Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. 
Lord. If you love the Lord, say I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Jesus. Yes, he is. And I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Jesus. He is good. He's good. So good. Ministries Incorporated. Um, dear Pastor Tucson, on behalf of Goodwill, I'm sorry, on behalf of Gone Fishing Ministries, I want to thank you and your continuous support of our organization. Your donations to date have totaled $734.25 for this year. These monies go a long way toward helping us with our ministry of combating hunger in our community and providing disaster and emergency food services when needed. As you likely know, we are total, totally volunteer organization, which means that each dollar you donate goes toward directly to helping those in need. You might remember that we tried serving twice a week and did that for most of the year but had to return to one day due to the strain on our finances. We now continue to serve on Wednesdays 
averaging more than 300 meals, including delivering 174 meals in Pastor Shan's community and another 48 meals in Delil. We are proud of our ability to continue to meet this need. The continuing support of individuals and organizations <coughs> like yours make it possible for our organization to continue to exist and to help the less fortunate in our community. Again, thank you so much for your support. May God continue to bless you as you bless others. Sincerely, Anita Gianni, um, Gone Fishing Ministry Board member. Amen. A few in-house announcements. First Missionary Baptist Church, Pastor Shan, um, join us for the initial sermon of Zenobia Ann Holt. Today at 2 o'clock p.m., um, fellowship and birthday celebration immediately after service in the fellowship <coughs> hall. Um, Luke 4 and 18 the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set a, at liberty them that are bruised. Amen. Amen. The layman will have a meeting on Thursday at 6 p.m. And just want to remind you on Sunday, February the 11th, we will have early morning worship service at 8 a.m. Reminder of ways to give. If you are in-house worshiping with us, you can drop your tithes and offering in the tithing box back by the entrance door. If you would like your tithes picked up, just raise your hand and an usher will come by and pick those up for you. You can mail your tithes and offerings to P.O. Box 292, Pastor Shan, Mississippi. Visit our website at www.gmbcpc.org or cash at the church at dollar sign GMBCPC 292. Okay. Amen. Amen. want to announce a conversation with Cassie Davis, The Dream of My Life, February the 17th at 1 o'clock p.m. until 3 o'clock p.m. The O'Keefe Museum or O'Keefe Museum of Art um, will host a luncheon with Mississippi native and movie star Cassie Davis. It looks like the cost may be $50 if anyone is interested. Okay. okay. Amen. Amen. Um, February is Black History Month, and we here at Goodwill celebrate as Come As You Are yeah. month for, okay. for the month of February. Okay. All um, right. First Sunday is... Come as you are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. No bikinis. No, no particular um, <laughs> designation on uh, first Sunday. Second Sunday. Um, hmm. oh, Jerseys. Second Sunday, you can come in your sports attire, jersey attire, um, high school, college, NFL, NBA, any type of um, jersey that you would like. Third Sunday, um, African attire. Okay. Amen. Okay. And then on fourth Sunday, come as you are as well. Okay. Amen. Okay. All right. We'll do that. Amen. Let's keep our bereaved families and also our sick and shut in in our prayers on this week. We want to keep the White family in our prayers and the loss of Deacon White's brother the Collier family and the loss of Deacon Collier's uncle, and then the Joyner family in their loss. Amen. Amen. We're asking um, anyone that can attend on next Sunday, I mean, I'm sorry, next Saturday, 
to come out for a cleanup day here at the church. Um, we'll be organizing some things upstairs and um, as many hands that can and are able, we ask that you come out from nine until 12 o'clock on next Saturday. We also need, are in need of someone to um, put a shelf together. So if you have those capabilities, <laughs> <laughs> we'll look forward to seeing you uh -huh. on next Saturday. All Amen. Right. Amen. I do not see any first time <laughs> visitors, but if there is someone that would like to stand at this time and be recognized, you're welcome to do so. Amen. 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 If not, we just bless God on this morning because um, he is worthy of our praise. Amen. Amen. I just, uh, thank you, Sis Key. I, I rose to kind of put a, uh, a little something in your mind concerning Gone Fishing Ministries. Uh, we as a church, we just give a percentage of our income to that ministry. But I want to give you an opportunity, if you wish, to, to, to make your own personal donations to that ministry. Uh, even if you if you put your envelope and you got tithe on it, you might want to put where it says other. You might want to put something and contribute it to Gone Fishing Ministries. It's been a blessing. We, that that's uh, that's something that was birthed here at the church. We started as our disaster relief, and then it just got to be 501c3, and now it's feeding uh, at least 300 people every week. And we want to, we want, we're praying to God because when we started, we asked the Lord, uh, if you're going to give us this ministry, we're going to trust you to provide a means for us to get it done. Uh, so my prayer in support of that ministry is that we can get it to go back to two days a week at least. Okay. And so uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm just uh, appealing to you. Uh, a dollar here, a dollar there. Just, just imagine if each one of us gave a dollar a week, how that could add up. Okay, so uh, consider that in your, when you do your envelope for tithe and offering. Amen. All right.
place in our lives when we can say that and mean it and understand amen. that there's no other way. No way. Amen. And I, 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 I don't know about you, but I've tried yes. to make it on my own. I've tried to solve my own problems, you know, and uh, I just made things, made matters worse for myself. When I learned to turn it over to the Lord, amen, he's faithful, and he sure will make a way out of no way, amen, he is the way maker, and we praise God for that blessing. Thank God for all of you this morning, and for the blessings of this day. I do want to recognize uh, the... Uh, as I come this morning with the word, I'll turn this on just, just for my Facebook brothers and sisters. Uh, Mike's in here not working real good now, but we'll get them together soon. Okay? Uh, I, I just, to, to get this message to your thoughts in, in, before I start where, with the scripture for today, uh, I want to remind you all of what the theme is. Uh, uh, equipping, equipping, equipping the church for ministry. That's why we're here. That's our purpose. And, and our goal is to do all we can to equip you, get you prepared. And the Sunday school lesson this morning was outstanding. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, just as every part of my body has have a function, have a have a ministry, if you would say, every part of the body of Christ has a ministry. Amen. God has called you to do something. Amen. We don't have we don't have cheerleaders. Amen. No pom-poms allowed in the charge. <laughs> no cheering section. Everybody's on the team and got a role to play. God called us to do something. Amen? Amen. And if you don't know exactly what your, what your calling is, then you ask him. Yeah, he's the caller. 
Amen. Can I get a witness? He's the one who calls, so ask him. And, and I tell you, he'll let you know. And if, if he don't have a calling for you, then you need to find out who your Savior is. Amen. Because he, he's going to give us something to do. So I thank him for that this morning. So my, I, I, I'm, I'm leading to you to the scripture for today. It's, it's from that same book of Ephesians. And our theme for the year is from Ephesians chapter 4, verses uh, 11 through 12. But the theme, the scripture for today is Ephesians chapter 6. Uh, and Larry will have it up there for us in a minute. Verses 10 through 13. Now, I want to get you up to date on this thing, too, before I get started. Uh, Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus to try to set in some order, some things that need to be, uh, you know, they were already Christians, but there were some things that were still, that fl they were still doing in the flesh. There was not that they needed to learn how to live according to God's will. I'm noticing if you go all the way back into the first part well, I, I went back and I noticed that he addressed marriages. He addressed the family. If you look in chapter 5, he started addressing the family and how the husband ought to be toward the wife and how the wife ought to be out there. You'll read that. And then he also gets to talk about how the parents ought to be toward their children and how the household should be in accordance to God's holy will. But then he gets off into chapter 6 where we are in our text today. Uh, and he's concluding his, his, his letter to the church at Ephesus. So in verses 10 he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual host of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take on up the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand, withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. I want to use for a subject this morning, armored up. Okay. Armored up. Now, my military brothers and sisters, the white nose, the Kalia nose, the Robert nose, about what it about being armored up. The more you know. Uh, I was in the Navy. I didn't go out on the battlefield like you did, Robert. I was a barber, but it didn't matter what you did in your day-to-day -day activity. <clears throat> when they said general quarters, you need to change your uniform, and everybody had to armor up, put on your battle gear, get ready for combat. Your whole attire changed. In my barber shop, I just put on a smock. But when I got ready for battlefield, I had to put on a helmet mm -hmm. and a, what we call a utility belt. You know about the utility belt? Where I could hang all my weapons because it was not haircutting time, James. It was fighting time. Well, what I'm, what I'm here to let you know, and I want all you new Christians to know this, and most of you who've been on the battlefield for a while already know this. 
What every Christian needs to know, every believer needs to know, that this Christian journey is a battleground. Okay? I remember one time speaking from this text, and my, my message was to put down your tennis shoes and put on your boondockers because it was time to fight. When you become a Christian, you've got a new enemy that is well trained in his battles. And his, 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 his battle is not necessarily against you, but it's against the God that you serve. And I want you to know that he will do anything to deter you from the ministry that God has called you to. He does not wear a red suit. Okay? He doesn't have a little tail on the back. He's not a cute little animal. Now, he may be cute. For you men, he may wear a mini skirt. For you ladies, he may be buff like I am. <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? Because <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? <laughs> but this enemy is wise and cunning. And he's seeking to destroy you. And he would like to use you. To embarrass God. Yeah. You've already claimed to be one of God's soldiers. And a lot of times we don't know we're soldiers. Right. We'd rather play church than fight the good fight that the church must fight. Y'all, this is not a playground. Okay, and our enemy means business. He does not take off time for good behavior. Okay, he's never embarrassed. And I know some, I've heard somebody say, shame the devil. There is no shame in him. You can't shame him. Because shame is something that comes to somebody that, that means to do good. And he never means to do good. Amen. And I'm, I'm here this morning to tell you that we need to take this enemy seriously. Because yeah. he's serious in about what he does. Paul gives us three pointers on standing strong in the armor of God. Now, I, 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 I want you to know that armor is a covering used to protect an object, an individual, a vehicle from physical injury or danger. Okay? We need to be protected, but sometimes it's not what's up. Protecting you on the outside. Sometimes your heart needs protection. So Paul gives us what we need, and I, I like this. I'm talking, talking about equipping you. Well, it, it looks like God is the one who equips us. So, so Paul gives us three, three parts of the armor, how to armor up. Which we, if we understand and apply these, will enable us to walk in victory. Okay? We cannot walk around like failures. Like we, we sh I'm going to use the word scared. I could say afraid, but I'm going to say scared. Not only can God not use a, 
a, a, a coward soldier. Can I get a witness? So Paul gives us three pointers. First, he gives us the source of this strength in verses 10 through 11a. It comes from God and not us. You don't have any power. Amen. And so the devil, sometimes he will make you think you've got power and have you leaning on that power you think you have. And then that's he'll attack you, amen, and show you you're not who you think you are. Paul says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Okay, the strength comes from the armor of God. It is armor that God gives us. And note this, you've got to put it on. Okay, it won't do you any good sitting on the shelf. I mean, when I was in, when we were in the military, amen, long as we were not in combat, we could put it in the closet. But then when it was time to fight, we had to put the, the uniform on. Amen? Amen. Amen. We are not left to our own feeble strength. And y'all, we need to know that. I don't care how strong you think you are, you need to put on God's divine power. Amen. Amen. And that will protect you from the battle that we must face. And I need you to know this morning that it's a battle that you must face. Yeah. You must know that there is a war going on and we've got a formidable enemy that means business and he does not take off time most of the time when you're resting he's plotting on you secondly there's a need for this strength in verses 11b through 13 the need is to stand against the wiles of the devil we need to be, be aware of his many tricks distractions, devices that Satan uses. The Lord is the only one who can help us to overcome the wicked one, to wrestle against the spiritual host of witness, wickedness. Amen. He has an army. He's got an army uh, of principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world. It's a spiritual warfare. Yes, Amen. And you cannot fight spiritual warfare in your flesh. Just like you can't serve God in your flesh, you can't fight the devil in your flesh. You need some spiritual power to fight against this evil one. Yes. Our battle is not against human beings. We're not fighting one another. The devil have us attacking one another every now and then. But my battle is not with you, and your battle is not with me. We've got an enemy, and we're all on the same side fighting that same enemy. Now watch him, watch him, watch him. He will have us plotting against one another. He'll have us falling out with one another. He'll pick little small insignificant things and have us warring against one another to divert our attention away from him who is our real enemy. We're not fighting against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness, in high places. Amen. We may not fully understand how the rulers of darkness operate, but we know we need all the strength God provides to stand against his forces. So then the third thing is the nature of this strength. Verses 14 through 20. It takes the whole armor. But White says, amen, it covers the front. He does not attack you from the back. You notice when Adam and Eve, amen, when they sin, they put on an apron. Can I get a witness? But that was not enough. They had to put on what God gave them. 
because theirs were not sufficient. We need all of it to stand against the wiles of the devil. We need to withstand all in the evil day. Every element of the army is necessary for us to stay, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So the armor is such. The whole armor involves truth. The belt that holds our lives together with a sense of direction and purpose. Not only should you tell the truth, amen, you need to live the truth. Amen. amen. It's not always what you say. It's how you carry yourself. Amen. Some of us live a lie. Can I get a witness? Amen. amen. We may, we may amen, concentrate on what we say. Amen. But sometimes you act like what you aren't. And so your life is a lie. Amen. So we, we gird ourselves with the truth. Righteousness, the breastplate of justification found only in Jesus Christ, which protects us from the accusations of Satan. He might be able to accuse your flesh, but he can't accuse Jesus because he tried that when Jesus was tempted. And every time he tried to attack Jesus, he fell in his tribe. So don't stand on yourself because you're not strong enough to stand. But if you stand with Jesus as your foundation, you can fight all the wiles of the devil. I'm not, justifi I'm not justified because I'm a holy man. But I'm justified. My, I get my justification from Jesus Christ. I'm justified because of my relationship with God through Jesus Christ. In all of my righteousness, I'm no better than filthy rag. So I'm standing on the righteousness of my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. Then we have the gospel of peace. The shoes we wear as we bring the glad tidings of the, uh, to the world. Faith is the shield that protects us from every fiery dark that Satan throws at us. Amen. We walk by faith and not by sight. We've heard that without faith, it is impossible to please God. For they that come to him must believe that he is and that he's a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Then I'm wearing the helmet of salvation. Amen. The helmet that provides us with the hope that protects us from, many, from all our minds against uh, fear and despair. Because now if the devil can't get in your heart, he'll show enough get in your mind. Oh, yeah. Amen. He'll tell you, you're not, all, you're not what all you say you are. But I may not be what I say I am, but I am what God says I am. Yeah. Amen. I'm not standing on my promise. I'm standing on the promises of God. Yeah. God says I'm more than a conqueror. Yeah. To me, I'm a loser, but God says I'm more than a conqueror. To me, I can't get much accomplished, but I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I'm not leaning and depending on me. I'm leaning and depending on Jesus. He's my source and my shield. Amen. We need to learn that. It's, listen, listen. Ain't nothing about any of us on our strongest day. On our strongest day, we're weak enough to fall. But if you lean on Jesus, he'll never fail you. Amen. The word of God, the sword, the only weapon of offense in the whole armor of God. Amen. The only weapon of offense is the word of God, which we must use in our battle to tear down Satan's stronghold. When he attacked Jesus, amen, all Jesus used, it is written. But you can't tell the devil what is written if you don't know what's written. Now listen, let me tell you, you can't tell him what you heard because he know the word too. Can I get a witness? So you need to know the word. Now listen, we need to spend more time in the word. And I listen, I'm going to tell you something. 
<laughs> you can't go listen to Johnny, Mary, and Sue. You can't be torn about it, and we talk about it a little bit later on. Every doctrine, if everybody that say they know the Lord don't really know him. You can't read everybody's book. There are some people writing books just for profit and could care little anything about your soul. What I do as your pastor, and even if you give me a book, I want to know who that author is. I want to know a little bit about his background. I want to know if he really knows Jesus. Or if he's just in this thing for the business. The word of God. Amen. And Jesus said, well, what does the word say? And when somebody come to you with something, you ask him, well, what does the word say? Because that's your sword. And then there's prayer. The means by which we remain watchful. The sort of watchful prayer that is. All pers perseverance, as Jesus taught in his parable, amen, uh, to the window, amen, supplication for saints. Y'all listen, we need to stop talking about people. Oh, did I say something? Yeah. I've told you before, now listen, if you're going to say something to, about somebody, say it to Jesus. If you're going to talk about somebody, talk, talk to Jesus about them. I noticed even in Paul's writing, he noticed some things were wrong with the charge. You know what he did? I pray for you. I pray that the Lord would give you. I pray that the Lord would strengthen you. It's about prayer. I think we spend too little time on our knees. And too much time running our mouths. Now, I'm not talking about y'all. <laughs> when we are armed with these qualities, and I want you to real think about this. I, it takes a lot of time for you. I, when, 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 when we were in the military, we had to put it on. You remember that? Even, even when we got on board ship, I mean, you know, they built those ships with some armor. Thick metal so that the certain bombs would not penetrate. You understand? They even got some planes and ship now that with stealth bombers, they're hidden where the radar can't even detect them. What's protecting you? What's shielding you? What's keeping you on the battlefield? You know the devil want all of y'all to quit and go home? Huh? He don't want you preaching, teaching. He don't want you spreading the gospel. He wants you at enmity with one another. So long as you're fighting one another, who's going to fight him? There's a war going on. It's a spiritual warfare. So all of us, and I want my young people that's just now coming into the charge to know you it's not a playground. This is serious business. And our enemy means to stop you. And I learned this. He wants to get at you early. When you first start coming to the charge, he wants to get you then. Because if he, he knows if you stay too long, you might start growing. And if you grow too much, then he won't be able to handle you. So he can handle you while you're weak, so he won't have to deal with you when you get strong. But if you're wearing your armor, it'll protect you against the wiles of the devil. There's a war going on, and we're going to win. What side are you on? What decision have you made? Where are you going from here? Don't quit because I say you got an enemy because you're just giving in to his will and his desire for your life. It's time for all of us to make up our mind. Now listen, a lesson this morning was real meaningful because it says, without you, I can't function. Without me, you can't function because we are all part of one family. Now listen, don't, don't stab one another. 
Am I helping somebody? Don't let the devil make you fall out with somebody. You know, he say, she say. My question is, who is he and she? Are they? You know, they tell me. Well, who are they? Most of the time, they, they are hiding somewhere on the bushel. They throw their rocks and they hide their hands. And then while they're hiding, you're fighting one another, giving in to Satan's wiles and wickedness. What made Jesus so strong is that he started out with the arm of God, even from birth. And all that you heard about him doing, he was able to do it because he was wearing the armor of God, healing the sick, Raising the dead, giving sight to the blind, making the lame to walk, walking on water, calming the raging sea. He was able to do all of that because he had the armor of God. And what made him even more successful than that, they thought him, they had him. Pilate said, don't you know I can take your life? Jesus said, my friend, don't nobody take my life. I laid down my life. He was wearing the armor. And they thought they had him, y'all. They thought they had him when they took him up that Calvary's mountain and then nailed his hands to the cross. We got him now. Death says to grave, grave, if you, I'll catch him and give him to you. And if I give him to you, Mr. Grave, you, all you got to do is hold him. Grave says to death, give him. I've held, I held, I held Abraham. I held Isaac. I held Jacob. Amen. They're still in the grave. Well, okay, grave, I'm going to get him and I'll give him to you. And sure enough, that Friday, death got a hold to Jesus. I got him now. I'm giving him to you, grave. Grave says, I got him. But grave didn't know Sunday was coming. Amen. The Sunday morning, Jesus got up out of that grave and declared all power is in my hand. Amen. So, so listen, if you want that power, all you got to do is turn your entire life. Did I say your entire life? Turn it all over to Jesus. And I declare before God in this house today that he will help you fight against the wiles of the devil. All you got now listen. Listen, when I got up this morning, I didn't just put on part of my armor. Help me, somebody. I, listen, I, I will tell you what I did. It was about Friday. Yes. I thought about, now, what, what am I going to put on for Sunday? Yes. I didn't wait till, y'all, I didn't wait till this morning to decide what I was going to put on. I had already decided maybe by Friday. Uh-huh. Y'all understand? Well, don't, don't wait till the battle comes to put on your armor. Amen. You know the battle's coming. You know it's coming, and you know it's, it may not come when you're not ready. You may not be ready. You get ready. I'm going to wait till Sunday. He may come Friday. Know you have an enemy. Know he knows what he's doing. But know you got an armor that will fight anything he has to offer. No weapon formed against you will prosper. God will give you everything you need. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I'm going I'm to say it like this. And I use that subject armored up. Because we used to talk about, we, and I don't know if it was in Bible class or what, we used to talk about staying armored up. You don't wait till you get into battle to get armored up. You need to stay armored up. Because just like God won't, won't come when you want him, he'll always be on time. The devil won't come when you expect him. He'll come at any time. Amen. Amen. So we should always be ready. Amen. 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 Now, Minister Millinder is going to come and, and give the invitation, but I also want you to give us that closing prayer. We've got all of our brothers and sisters who are, uh, are sick and shut in and 
losing loved ones. Um, and uh, Sister Bowser, uh, uh, Lamont Bowser, Lamont. add him to our prayer as well. Okay. Amen. Arm it up. If you're not arming up, now's the time. I, I would um, encourage you to read that word again and arm up. Because if you're not in a battle, you're getting ready to go into and a battle. Why? Or you just come out of a battle. And the only way we can stand strong is by being armored up. Because we don't fight. We're not fighting flesh and blood. We're fighting principalities and high places. And we need to realize that. But if you're not armored up in the kingdom of the Lord... What a better day to become a Christian, to give your life to Christ. So we offer Christ to you. If you haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior, what better day than today? You can't fight this battle on your own. You, can, you have to depend on Jesus every day, all day, in order to fight this battle with you. Do we have one that want to commit your life to Christ today? Amen. Amen. And we're going to, if you could just stay standing, we're going to pray uh, for the following. The Curtis Fields and family, Otis Brumfield and family. And these are families that's in bereavement. Uh, Deacon Jarrett White and family uh, who lost his brother on Friday and who will be traveling to Cincinnati for that funeral this week. Um, Deborah Joyner, Dennis Lee and family, Carla Jones, <laughs> Billy Morgan, the Stewart family, A.C. Pinton, uh, Deacon Eddie Collier and family, Jamie Fredericks Jr., Lamont Bowser, Annette Coleman, Lathan Hill, family of Todd Woody, M Myron ba uh, Labot and family, and Pastor Luter and family. Father God, we come to you, God, with humble hearts, Lord. And Father, and we just lay all these individuals at your altar, Lord. Yeah. Father, we pray that you would just cover them in your blood, God, yes. that you would comfort them in their hour of need, God, that you would give them peace, God, that passes all, all understanding, of... God. Yes. God, for those that are sick, God, we're asking that you would just touch them from the top of their heads to the soles of their feet and that you would heal, God. Father, your word said, whatever we are in need of, God, to come boldly to your throne yeah, of grace, God. And we're coming, and we're, just, we're believing, God. We're believing for you to, to work miracles in the lives of individuals that are sick, God. Heal yeah. them, God, like only you can heal them. God, whatever anyone else is in need of, God, meet each and every one of us at our point of need, God. Whether it's financial, whether it's spiritual, God, whether it's physical or, or, or healing, God. But you know what we're in need of, God. God, we ask that you would just bring us, bind us closer to each other, God. Yeah. God, we're asking for unity in the body. In the body. That yes. we can function effectively, God, and to do your kingdom work, God. Yeah. God, we pray that you would just continue to endow our pastor with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, yes. God. So he can stand yeah. in these last and final evil yeah. days, God. Yeah. Yeah. Father, we just pray for everyone here, God, that, that you would just bless them, God, and you would continue to to cover them with your blood, God. We pray all these blessings, and we ask all this in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, 
dominion and power both now and forever. And all of God's people sang. Amen. Amen. Get wet.